Frank Bainimarama turned 55 this week and his troops turned up at dawn to wish him many happy returns. They add an extra stanza in Fiji, happy long life to you. Happy long life to you. But not all Fijians wish him well. Back in 2000, some of his own soldiers tried to kill Bainimarama in a bloody mutiny. He's purged the ranks since then, and everyone here now, he says, supports his plans to rid the country of racism and put Fiji on a different path. The poison chalice now is coming from Fiji's neighbours, who say they're set to punish him for not setting the date for a fresh election this year. As we'll see, he seems as relaxed about that as he is here, insistent that no poll will take place until 2014. And perhaps that's because of the new friends he has, countries with strategic ambitions and deep pockets like China. Bainimarama's relationship with the local Chinese ambassador is a warm one, small wonder when China's aid to Fiji increased sevenfold in just one year after the coup. The Indian High Commissioner is on good terms too, but Australia and New Zealand, well, they haven't been here since the coup of 2006 hoping their absence might help encourage Bainimarama to back down. It isn't going to happen, he says. There will be no early election, and that's that. In the meantime, he's making plans for the next five years, an agenda that even includes asking the Queen back when democracy returns. She's been absent from Republican Fiji for 22 years. But would you like to invite the Queen to be Queen of Fiji again? Yes, uh, that would be nice. But and that's know, what you've got in mind? Well, no, not really. But uh, as I said, uh, we haven't decided what uh, we're going to do. But you're not we, ruling it out? Is we're it? not ruling it out. But all that's in the future. For now, Fiji is under a state of emergency. The media has been muzzled. There's no political news in the papers. Troublemakers are detained. That clampdown will continue. But if this is a national crisis, you wouldn't know it on the streets. For ordinary people, life goes on. There's no overt sign of dissent. Like much of the rest of the world right now, what really counts is making ends meet. But while Fiji is calm, even relaxed under emergency rule, it's at the centre of a political and diplomatic storm. Ranged against it, some very big guns. The UN Security Council, the Commonwealth, the Pacific Islands Forum, the United States, the European Union, Australia, New Zealand. Anyone else might be having second thoughts, but not Fiji's strongman, Frank Bainimarama. Prime Minister, the forum countries, much of the international community, want you to hold an election. Um, and they wanted you to hold it this year. Is that going to happen? Uh, no, I think we made it quite clear uh, that it's not going to happen. Uh, there will be no election until September 2014. None, That's whatsoever, clear. none whatsoever? None whatsoever. So the five-year deadline that you've set yourself is the only deadline you're working to? That is set by His Excellency the President after he abrogated the Constitution. He gave uh, the government a, a mandate, one of which was to have election by September 2014. So that's the deadline. Are you and the President one and the same? Uh, no, I don't make decisions for him. Uh, he makes uh, decisions for himself and, and uh, for the government. Really. Let's just talk about your relationship with the international community. In purely military terms, you're, you're up against it, aren't you? You talk, uh, Graham, as if they were going to invade Fiji tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock. Uh, there have been suggestions in some quarters that that very thing happened. I know, but we're from where? New Zealand? I know I was threatened in 2000. Sorry, it wasn't 2000. It was 2006. I was threatened by the... Um, the chief of defense, the Australian chief of defense, and he keeps, uh, uh, when he's reminded about it, he, he, he says it didn't happen. Well, it did happen. I was in Sinai, and he woke me up early in the morning to tell me, uh, don't ever do anything that will pit my troops against yours. And I remember we had a grog, heavy grog session the night before, and I was still dope with grog, and I thought... You're talking about Carver. Uh, about cover. Mm. This is in Sinai. Yeah. And I thought, I'm not the one that's dope. It must be this guy that's dope. To come up with a suggest suggestion such as that. So this was the head of the Australian Defence Force. Yeah. Uh, was this Angus Houston or...? Angus Houston. 
Angus Houston, Angus Houston rang you in Sinai. Rang me in Sinai. And said... And said, don't do anything that will, have my, that will make me pit my troops against yours. And was the implication there that he'd whacked the implication, you back? The implication was it was a threat. He made a threat. What did you say to him in response? Well, I said, uh, I, I really don't know where he was coming from. And um, that was the end of the conversation. Does it bother you that the relationship with Australia is so bad that the head of the Australian Defence Force would even have a conversation like that with you? He did. But it was uh, exactly opposite to what the Chief of New Zealand Defence uh, called me and told me. He said, uh, I understand what you're doing. I just hope you look after all the Kiwis in Fiji. And I said, uh, I will look after everyone in Fiji if anything happens. This, this line-up against you would, well, would impress, even terrify a lot of world leaders. All the members of the UN Security Council, the biggest nations in the world, members the of the Commonwealth. Members of the Security Council, Graham? Who? Members of the Security Council. Well, I assume China, France, the you think, US. You think China is China's against Fiji? We have a wonderful relationship with China. We're trying to build on that. And we hope to uh, continue with the relationship. We uh, look forward to them with, in, in terms of trade, uh, investment, businesses. Um, and have you turned to them because of the deterioration in your relationship with Australia and New Zealand? We've always had to look to China. We, we've, it was always in that direction. Even in the events of 87, uh, when New Zealand and Australia pulled away from, from Fiji, uh, we, Fiji had looked to, to, um, to uh, the North, the Asian uh, community. So China understands what's happening here? China understands what's happening here. And, then, and that, that we need to do things our own way. And they want to leave us to do things our own way. That's and, good enough for us. And they've told you that specifically? They've told us that. They're giving you money too, aren't they? And lots of it. Well, uh, we're trying to get a loan to uh, carry out some infrastructure building. Do you think they're also filling a void, a power void? Well, that's been I, vacated by Australia and New Zealand in this well, standoff? Well, I, I don't know much about power void. But uh, I know that uh, they want to assist us in every sense of the word. You're aware, aren't you, that Australia and New Zealand aren't happy about this burgeoning relationship between you and China. They've even tried to influence the Chinese in their policy towards Fiji. But they have a relationship with Chinese. They do, yes. China, uh, New Zealand does, and Australia does. Yes. So why not Fiji? When, when you and the president abrogated the constitution, you also introduced a month's, a month long state of emergency. I think it's due to expire on the 10th of May. What's going to happen on the 10th of May? Are you going to end that state of emergency or continue it? Let me first uh, correct you, Graham, that I and His Excellency did not abrogate the Constitution. His Excellency was the one that abrogated the Constitution, not me. And You'll be aware many think that you are the hand in the President's glove. Um, I, 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 really, I really don't want to talk about that. But there's a lot of insinuation that I was the one that abrogated the Constitution. We all know that, that I'm not the one. But uh, uh, coming out from the, uh, the decision to abrogate the Constitution and the way forward, we decided to put on the emergency regulation, which, uh, uh, which stays for, for a month from that day. Mm. And uh, on completion of that, we will have another look at uh, what has happened and if we need to keep it for another month. It's, everything is quiet, isn't it? Uh, there doesn't seem to be any disturbances. Nothing. Uh, since you have military sensors or sensors in the country's newsrooms, uh, the, the media are uh, behaving themselves as you would see it. Uh, does that indicate to you that a month might be enough? That you might need to extend that? I think there may be a need to extend it. There will be? There will be. And why would that be? Well, we want this calm to continue for a while. Uh, the emergency regulation was brought entirely uh, for the media censorship. Uh, to ensure that there's calm in, in the nation, that there's no uh, uh, incitement 